Hi guys, it's Soren Scientific here, and today we will be talking about this Geotech Barracuda. And so, let's get started. So Ayush, how about a demonstration? Okay. So, here we got some rubber, right here, so, and here we have some metal. So, when you pull away from metal, it makes a beeping noise like this. But when you pull away from plastics and, and rubber, since it's not metal, no beeping noise. So, sure. this is actually a really good valve detector. It's the Geotech Barracuda from Silver Dog. So, yeah, um, I definitely recommend it for you. It would also help your skills on soldering. As you can see, the circuit here took a lot of soldering. Um, took a couple days to finish this. So, like, maybe in, like a month. Ayush, so, wait, the two most important things. Did we learn something? No. Did we have fun? Yeah. Excellent. Really, we didn't learn anything? Uh, yeah, totally. Okay. All right, let's have a look at the theory of operation of a pulse induction metal detector. So what I've got here is a very basic schematic showing the essential components of a pulse induction metal detector. We've got a search coil and a switch that we use to switch a voltage source to the top side of the coil. When you switch a voltage across a coil, the current will ramp and eventually we open up this switch uh, breaking the path and the voltage of the at the top of the coil will shoot far negative. Uh, that voltage will then recover through R3 so you end up with an LC recovery waveform. Uh, the one added complication we have in this circuit or the one additional thing that we show is a Zener diode to clamp or limit how far negative V coil can go. So how do we simulate the presence or absence of a chunk of metal next to the search coil? Well, what we've done here is we add another inductor to the circuit coupled through a coupling constant. The presence of a piece of non-ferrous metal next to a coil will tend to lower the inductance. It's basically like a shorted turn of the inductor. So we run this simulation several times. We step the coupling parameter through a few different values. And what we expect to see is a difference in the recovery waveform of V coil. And if we look at the basic theory, sure enough, that's what we get. So V coil shoots up when the time base waveform is high. So that is about, uh, what is that, about 100 microseconds or so. And what you'll notice is that the current through the coil ramps up linearly, just like we said before. So let's get a close picture of that. There we go. So we apply the voltage to the coil. The current starts to ramp up. We take the voltage away from the coil. The voltage shoots negative almost instantaneously. And then the current decays uh, through that damping resistor. And this is what we're after. These different curves represent the piece of metal moving towards or away from the coil. And that's what the Barracuda attempts to do, the Barracuda circuit. It attempts to sample this waveform at two different points in time over and over again, uh, building up sort of a history of this waveform. And as you move the coil toward or away from a target, uh, the recovery curve will change, and that's what we try to pick up on. So let's have a look at that. So here is a slightly more, in, a slightly more complete schematic of the metal detector. Once again, we start with that time base signal, and that time base signal goes through a couple of delay elements. So the purpose of these R's and C's and logic gates here is to produce two sample waveforms, sample one and sample two. Those are used to control two JFET switches at the input of a difference integrator. So sample one comes along, uh, closes this switch, we sample one point of the waveform, sample two comes along, we sample the next point, and we slowly build up the difference between those two points in time. So as a target moves toward or away from the coil, we expect to see V int sliding up and down as a result. 
we look at that, we capacitively couple that signal into a comparator with an adjustable threshold. So this is a fixed voltage source in the simulation. It's actually a knob on the actual circuit. And we derive a signal called beep control. So when beep control goes high, that is when the metal detector buzzes. So once again, we've got the that same circuit from the previous schematic, except with real components, uh, using a MOSFET switch to switch the voltage at the top side of the coil. And uh, slightly different than the first simulation, rather than step the coupling parameter, we want a continuous time domain simulation. So what we've done here is we short out this inductor. So a shorted inductor indicates a target close to the coil. Uh, if we open the switch, that indicates the target moving away. And let's look at the result of this simulation here. So sure enough, as we move the coil toward or away from the target, we end up with this waveform at vint and beep control moving up and down. So let's rerun this. When you uh, looks like when you switch back and forth, the uh, waveform disappears. So sure enough, as we're moving the target away, the beep goes off. Target toward the beep goes on. And let's have a closer look at those sample signals. That might be kind of interesting. So we're going to probe sample 1 and sample 2. And did those show up or not? I guess not. Let's try that one more time. Sample 1 and sample 2. And maybe we have to rerun again. Yeah, there we go. So if we zoom in on our sample signals, Sure enough, we see that sample 1 happens first and then sample 2. And we slowly build up that integration history. OK. OK, here's some uh, comments on the construction of this beast. So what we have here is the search coil, the thing that actually sniffs for pieces of metal. And this was built on two 9-inch acrylic discs. And uh, what we did was we took a bunch of nylon standoffs, 13 nylon standoffs, and wrapped the wire in a basket weave fashion. So that's over two, under two, over two, under two. And uh, the coil is supposed to be around 500 nanohenries, and, or 500 microhenries, sorry. Uh, but I overwound it a little bit. So rather than undo that beautiful coil, I decided to put a selector switch. So now I've got inductances from about 250 to 700 nanohenries. And I can sort of tweak around to find the, uh, the best option. So this is mounted using a 3 quarter inch PVC T with nylon screws. And around the outside of this thing is a Faraday shield. So that's a piece of copper tape wound around the coil. And an important detail about this is that it cannot actually connect. You can't make a complete turn with the Faraday shield or else it will uh, short out the inductance. So we've got a knob on the top and a BNC connector, a 45 degree PVC elbow, and on up into the electronics box here. So this is a polycarbonate enclosure. That is Ayusha's soldering job there on the back of this circuit. The knobs for audio threshold and initial delay. This is powered by four and a half volts worth of AA cells. And what is that? That is an LTC 31, 30, uh, sorry, LTC 3121 boost converter. So that takes us from four and a half volts on up to 12 volts required for the circuit. Okay, and the last kludge on this thing is the speaker that's off to the side there. The arm brace is a, what is that, a three quarter inch by two and a half inch reducing T with the top cut off. And PVC is pretty easy to form if you heat it up a little bit with a heat gun.